Today I'm out here with this Dino Comp BMX bike. Or is it a freestyle bike? Or is it a BMX freestyle bike? Who knows? And I'm in the city of Newburgh, which is beautiful as usual, but the weather's kind of weird. The sun keeps going in and out behind the clouds, which means that taking photos of a bike is taxing my patience. But be that as it may, this is a nice, nice, well-preserved example of a dyno comp. Now let's start with the bad things first. This fork dropout is bent. See the paint's kind of coming off of it, and it's bent, which means that the wheel is like a little cocked in the fork. I'm not gonna try and do anything about that. I think if you clamped an adjustable wrench on here and tweaked it, it would probably unbend it. But I don't wanna screw it up. So I'll sell it just like that. It's not really a huge deal. I mean, it's not like you're gonna be bombing down a hill with this thing at 100 miles an hour and you have to worry about any like that stuff. Next, you got your GT tires. And for those of you who are too young to remember the days when you could walk in the local bike shop and buy these for like 12 bucks a piece, these are awesome tires. For street, for dirt, for ramps, they were super versatile and they look good. You know, they got the GT logos. I think these are later GT tires. I think on the earlier ones, the GT logo here is a little smaller. I could be wrong. But those are great tires. Unfortunately, they're totally cracked. You gotta watch out for that with these older bikes because these tires have very little wear on them. In fact, the little nubs are still there, like the molding nubs. But because of their age, they have these little cracks and if you put high pressure in them, those cracks could cause problems. I mean, the fundamental structure of the tire is not necessarily the rubber, it's like this woven stuff underneath, but still, I would say for any kind of aggressive use, these tires are probably dangerous. For display, they look great though. Next is a Diacomp Bulldog Brake, which you know, I don't think I would have ever worn, <laughs> worn, used that, but it's okay. You know, they came on a lot of stock bikes. Here's your Dino fingerprint head tube logo with your Odyssey gyro. This is in a time when there was no such thing as an Orig because I guess the guy who invented the gyro wasn't able to reclaim his patent or however that panned out. So it has the gyro. The back brakes work okay. You can tell a little kid owned this bike because they adjusted the levers so that a little kid could reach them. The screws are like all the way in. Fake mushroom grips. This is a really nice dyno seat. I mean, I think it's just like your typical GT freestyle seat with your little finger grips. Because there was a trick where you would put your fingers on here and grip. The seat's too low to demonstrate that. It has a fluted seat post, maybe alloy, maybe steel, probably alloy. GT seat post clamp. I think this bike comes from like the early 90s, so it's not all the really early stuff, but it's cool. And the paint is incredible. Like a Jackson Pollock. Listen to me sound like an art expert. Dino logo here. And on the down tube, of course, the comp logo. This does not have a meat tenderizer stem. It's just got like this little slant quill stem. No big deal. GT pedals. One piece cranks that are rusty and I did not clean those. Sorry. Dino stamp steel sprocket. Still has a chain guard. I almost took that off. It had a padded cover on the seat, I took that off, but I'm glad it had it because it really protected the seat. Here's your handles, like your finger indentations. The bulldog in the back, nice little dyno logo there. I think that's cool. Dyno logo here, typical BMX freewheel steel hubs. And these are steel rims. They look like those old Yukais, but they're actually steel. Little rust on the sidewalls. I didn't clean it too well. Another GT logo for the tire. So I don't know exactly what year this bike is, probably late 80s, early 90s, where they were just kind of reusing the old frame design as a lower end model on the, on the new model year, but I think they did a really good job with this bike. 
I'm not sure who would have bought this or what the what the, the demographic would have been because I think by then kids were kind of growing out of freestyle bikes but it's a nice looking bike designed and engineered in the USA does that say engineered I can't really see it and made in Taiwan it has a chromoly down tube I don't know why they would do that. They would make one or, one or two tubes out of chromoly, probably just so they could use that term on the bike and make it sound better. Dyno logos on the forks. Alloy front hub. That's nice, that'd save you half an ounce. So I'm gonna guess if you were a kid like in the Bronx in 1992 and your big brother was a freestyler from the 80s and your mom would take you into the bike shop at Christmas and buy you this, you would have been eternally stoked. I think that's who this bike is for. You know, a kid who was like 12 in the early 90s, didn't know so much about the BMX market in the early 90s. And I'm sure there are people who would absolutely latch onto this because it would bring back a lot of nostalgia. Plus it's in nice shape other than that bent dropout. Or, if you're like a strictly old school guy, you could strip this down to the frame and repaint it in, you know, early 80s, like 86, 85 dyno colors and put old dyno decals on it. Because the frame pretty much looks the same. I mean, I don't think it's totally identical, but it pretty much looks the same. So you could either leave this as it is and enjoy it, you could ride it or you could strip it down and turn it into like a like a reproduction of an earlier dyno. So there's a bunch of different ways to go with it. I of course will just sell it how it is. But I'm really glad that I found it. Because it's such a cool bike. I'd like to kind of picture it with uh, with chrome handlebars instead of black and a chrome post instead of black. I think it might look better that way. Chrome rims. You know, it would end up with the orange. It would look like one of those uh, GT Pro Freestyle Tours. So that's another direction you could take. So I'll leave that up to whoever buys it. But for now, here it is leaned up against a concrete wall in the city of Newburgh. And it's a beautiful day. And that's just about the end of the video. That's about all I have to say about this bike. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to whoever the previous owner was for keeping it in such excellent condition and thanks to you for watching.